But hey, great to be back with everybody. Uh, we are on our final session here. So those that have been with me for all 12 times, well, myself and Aicha, she joined us for two of those. Um, hopefully there's been some interesting insights. Now, those that haven't, all of what's been done up to this point has been recorded. We have a tutorial. You can go through all that fun stuff. But today we're going to talk about uh, how Microsoft Graph can be used for email and calendar events and how we could actually integrate that into an app to just make it that much easier for your users to go find what they need. So this will build on what I did in the last session, session 11, um, and then we'll go from there. So uh, for those that don't know me, maybe this is your first time joining, we've been going through this taking your line of business apps to the next level. My name's Dan Walleen, um, I'm at Microsoft, and uh, this has been a fun little exercise in just breaking down little parts of the app to discuss what you can do to kind of help your users be more productive, more creative, all those fun things. So with that, um, we again are gonna focus specifically on email and calendar events and on a Microsoft Graph Toolkit component. And we have Sebastian here today. So uh, great timing actually, given that he is over that awesomeness. Um, so if you haven't joined us at all, there were three main parts to the app. We've covered AI features and we went into a whole bunch on Azure OpenAI, uh, how you could chat with data in your own documents even, and uh, a bunch more there. We also went into communication features. We talked about how you can make phone calls from an app. Uh, there's a lot of apps actually that could benefit from that that I've worked on over the years. I won't say it's appropriate for every app, but a lot of the ones I have worked on, they were on the phone a lot to verify things that were in the app with people. Um, also sending email and SMS messages. You could do that, and that also tied into the Azure OpenAI functionality to help generate some of those messages. But we are on the last part of this bring organizational data into your apps. And given that we're in a Microsoft 365 community call, a lot of you probably have done something like this. But for those that haven't, I'm going to speak more to you because there's really some awesome opportunities to bring this data right into your apps. So with that, let's jump into the demo again, just in case you haven't seen all of this. And in fact, let me just close that guy. So a really simple line of business app that allows you to view related content for a customer. Now, the kind of storyline here I've been talking about the last few weeks has been, if you're like me, in fact, I just did this yesterday. Um, we're uh, due for some of our review processes, kind of our mid-year uh, rev review processes coming up. And so I'm jumping all over the place. I'm jumping to Teams, I'm jumping to uh, Outlook, I'm jumping to OneDrive to check out files. And it's really easy just to lose track of what you were doing in the first place. Because if you're like me, you just get distracted easily. Um, so this would be an example of when they select like a Datum Corporation here and view related content, you'll notice it pulls in uh, some information. And the two we're gonna focus on this time, last week we focused on these two, OneDrive for business files and uh, Teams chats, and even how you could send a message into Teams channel. But this time we're going to talk about uh, email and we're going to talk about calendar events and how you can bring those in and format them. And I'm going to show you two ways we could do this. We could do it with pure Microsoft Graph or you could do the awesomeness of Microsoft Graph Toolkit, which I'll get into in a moment. And I'm going to show you kind of both approaches. I started out with just pure Microsoft Graph. And then uh, luckily, Seb and team, Seb and Gavin were the two I worked with the most on this. They came up with this phenomenal idea of, hey, what if we just made it so you could do this type of thing uh, without having to write all the Microsoft Graph code, code? And that's where this new MGT search results component is going to come in. We looked at it a little bit last week, but I have a little bit more and a cool trick you can do uh, this week. Now, if you haven't seen the app at all, you can also go in and as I mentioned, you can make phone calls actually from the app, uh, or you can use AI, you know, order is delayed. Um, and then I'm gonna generate an email or SMS message uh, right in a mystery, mystery novel uh, format. I don't know, I'm making this up here. Let's see what it does. But this would tie into the Azure communication services. Um, sorry to inform you, there's been a delay in processing. Okay, that one's not that exciting. I did one earlier with a different thing and it was a little more exciting, but anyway, um, we can kind of play with that. 
But then we could use Azure Communication Services to send the email, or we could send an SMS message. So in addition to phone calling, you could do these type of things right from your app. Not hard to set up, by the way, if you haven't done it. But what I want to now focus on is back to this part. So what can we do to bring in email or calendar events or things like that, but not have to write all the code to make that happen? It's not that we don't want to write all the code. I mean, come on, writing code is fun, but what if we could just simplify that process some? And we can. So if we go back over to the app, let me zoom this a bit for you. Um, you're going to notice that I have a calendar events component on the front end, and I have an emails component on the front end. So let's take a look at the email one first. And you're going to notice I have this MGT search results. And last week I talked a little bit about this, introduced it. And this is just a really, really cool web component. And if you're new to web components, again, they can be used all over the place, not just in like React or you know pure JavaScript, but also in Angular apps or Vue apps or Solid or whatever it is you're doing. As long as it's web-based, um, you could do something like that. So you'll notice that I have a custom CSS class and then this entity types. Now, entity types message is for email messages, as you would probably infer. Um, and then that's going to tell it kind of what we're after. If I go back to what we covered last week, let's go to files. Notice it was entity types drive item because it ties into OneDrive for business. So just by custom customizing the type of entity that you want, it'll automatically know what to go get uh, based upon that. Now, we also need to send it the search text. So I have this little query string here. This is the property they provide of what is it we're trying to query on? Well, if we go back right now, we're trying to query on a datum corporation, or if I were to come down to you know Tailwind Traders here, now we're querying on Tailwind Traders, and you'll see this works because as I type things like Tailwind Traders 2, you'll see nothing's found here. Uh, it's just kind of empty, but let's take that off. We'll do a, a live query here and well, we'll give it a sec. It might take a moment to come back, but it should. Oh, I went back to Tailwind. Um, yeah, they don't actually apparently have any. Yeah, okay. I guess they don't have any. Let's go back to a datum. And okay, it has two. So you can see that that way we could tie into all kinds of resources out there and not have to write a lot of code to do it. And that's done with this query string. And if you're not familiar with this little square bracket, don't worry about that. This is an Angular app. That's just data binding to properties. And it's basically saying, take the value they typed um, in that text box I showed you and assign it to this MGT search results uh, query string property. Now, that's all pretty straightforward. If you've done anything on front end apps before, you've probably used components like this. Pretty straightforward. Now, what's a little bit unique here is notice this data change. Now, this is an event that fires. And before we go too far, I want to go over to the docs with you. And so if we go to the docs, in fact, let me, uh, I'm going to bring this back up really quick. And I'm just going to paste this in for you. So this is the search results documentation. And give me one sec and I'll throw that in. There we go. Um, and then the next one I'm going to show you is this guy, which I showed a little bit last week. And this is a way to run things live. So we're going to look at both of these really quickly. Now, if we dive on into this, first off, you're going to have the ability to actually try this out live. This, this ties into what I'm going to show you next, which is super, super cool because you don't have to invest a lot of time. You can actually try it out, see how it looks, and then you know customize it. Now, right now, this is doing drive item. But of course, we could change to something like message right here. Super, super cool. Um, now, in this case, there may not be any for this, this particular, uh, whatever they're using for the sample data. So I'll go back to drive item, but you get the idea. Now, what I wanted to show you here is if we scroll on down, here's the entity types. You'll notice drive item, list item, site, and a whole bunch of others. There's message as an example. Really, really easy to get that type of data. Now, if we move on further, you'll notice I'm not using it, but you probably would, especially for email. Um, notice there's some paging features in here. Um, size of the page to be returned, as an example. Let me go just one bigger on this for you. 
And so really, it's just a matter of there's not that many properties to choose from, but it provides a way that you can not only deal with the paging aspect yourself, which is super cool uh, for things like email, but if you don't need to, you don't have to worry about it. You know, no big deal. Now, if we move on down, you can also customize. I did a, a custom CSS class on mine, but notice we have a search results one here. And it shows an example of how we can override the web component uh, CSS properties. And there's a whole bunch you can do. You can go to this styling components, which is actually the next tab I'm going to show you for that. And then what I want to show you to wrap up is notice this data change here. Now, why this is so cool is, first off, you might want to know when the data comes back, because maybe you, do, you want to intercept that data, do something else in the app, and then display it right? Well, in addition to that, we can do a kind of a cool trick here. So my data change here for the emails, if I go to definition here, you'll notice it's going to grab the, the value. Okay. So it's going to grab this value zero. And then what I'm going to do, because this is a search I'm using, um, it's going to go into the hit container and grab the matches, the hits, if you will. And I'm just simply going to loop through those push them into an array that you'll see right here. And then I'm going to assign them up to this data property. Now, this there's multiple ways you could do this. Pretty simple way here. But all I'm after is, hey, OK, the data changed. I want to know about it, and I'll tell you why. The reason I want to know about it isn't to kick off some other process in the app. I, I certainly, maybe I show a little bubble up in the header. You know, who knows? That shows the count, for example. I could do that here. But the reason I'm using it is this. That data property is going to be bound. In fact, you'll see a little data right here. But see this template? Result message. Now, there's a whole bunch of these. If I go back to the docs again, notice there's result dash star. So I could do result for message. I could do a result for drive items. Um, I could do a result for, and it just depends on the type of data you're getting back. And what this allows you to do is you can customize this template. Now, what I'm doing here is nothing really fancy, to be honest, but I'll show you. If I scroll on down, I left the template empty. And this is a nice trick because it turns out the syntax I would use to bind the properties that are coming back from the email message, they conflict the syntax from the web component and with Angular, it conflicts. Now you can override that or you could take the easy approach. And the easy approach is go get the data, update the property, and then just simply bind to that property and here is actually where I'm uh, looping through the data. There's my email messages of data. I have uh, my resource subject, my body preview, and then I'm linking to the, uh, the link for it. Now, if we go back, you'll see those three things here right there. So there's my subject, I guess, and there's a little bit from the body, the body preview, and then I could click on this to actually go to the email message. Now, what's so cool about this is it allows me to just use, whether it's React or Solid or Vue or Angular or whatever you're using, it doesn't matter. You simply assign the data to the property, which I'm doing right back here. And then once I get that data here, now I just use my React binding, my Solid binding, my, you know, whatever it is. In this case, it's Angular. Um, and I have a little comment here about that, hey, you could just have this render it itself. But if you want to control it, this is what you can do. Now, I want to wrap up with one more quick thing on that, and that is the calendar events. So you'll notice I have that right here. I stole this directly from the demo um, that Seb and team uh, put together. So it looks pretty cool, but I won't take credit because I was like, ooh, that looks cool. I'm going to use it. Um, so if I go on back to the uh, calendar, look what we have here should ring a bell. Okay, so I have search results as my CSS class, but notice my entity types is event, not message, not drive item, event. And then there's my query string, property binding, that binds to whatever they typed, a datum, a contoso, you know, whatever. And there again is my data change. Okay, and in this case, it's super helpful because this template is a little more tricky. 
Notice I put an empty template, but then down below, I have that same comment. And I then am using custom code. Just normal, again, Angular, React, Solid, Vue, whatever it is, bindings. And now I have no challenges at all with conflicts between maybe how a web component binds it versus how my uh, framework or library binds it. So this is all the code that is actually generating what you see right here. Pretty cool. So the, the bottom line and the reason I wanted to show you this is that this is a really nice way to get to that data as it returns. Basically tell it, hey, don't do your thing. I'm going to do my own thing. This is empty. And instead, I'm going to take care of binding it down here. And then it takes care of uh, writing that out. Now, you can find all of this in that second link I showed. Um, if you go to the mgt.dev, which is a great website to play with this, uh, you'll notice it has all the MGT components and then the preview components down here, which is the search results. And in the docs, they're going to have the same thing I just showed you. All right, They're going to have the properties and the events and all that fun stuff uh, down here. And then they'll have some examples um, that you can actually try out. Here's an example of drive item again, and then there's other properties like fetch thumbnail, if you want, um, for what we're actually going to be showing here. Pretty makes it look, you know, kind of nice. So with that, that kind of wraps up this series. And I hope that, for, especially for those that got to catch multiple parts of this, that, you know, you may look at it and go, well, I don't need the AI part, Dan, and, and you may not, that's totally fine. Or I don't need the ACS calling or SMS or email part. Okay, fine. The whole point of this is to hopefully get you thinking and saying, what could we do that's not just us thinking about, hey, I'm going to take this app and just build my database and my APIs. I mean, that's how we think. But when's the last time you took a step back and said, what can we do with the current app to really take it up a notch for the users? And these are three areas that you might consider. Of course, there's others that you could do as well. But I hope throughout this series, and if you haven't caught the whole thing, they're all recorded. So feel free to go back and review. But I hope oh, I got to take out. See you next week. Uh, I, I'll see you next week if I just join. I won't be presenting next week because this ends our series. But if you scan this, you can get to the tutorial. And I really do hope it kind of uh, exposes you to some other ideas about getting you thinking of about taking those apps to the next level. Um, so there's lots of things we can do. Now, I'm going to show in uh, one bonus point here to show you really quick, and then I'll wrap up. And that is uh, Copilot's a big deal these days, right? So we have compiled a Copilot roadmap, and you can get to this AKAMS uh, Copilots here. If you're interested, I'll, oops, I'll uh, paste this into the chat as soon as I get done. But this will give you a good idea about what's possible on and how you can adopt a copilot, how you can extend a copilot, or how you can even build a custom copilot, which we actually show off in this app. Uh, that was in a previous session. So with that, I'll turn it back over to you folks. And uh, thanks for having me for these different sessions. Uh, definitely check this out if you get some time. Mm -hmm.